let us start the topic uh, myself professor sujit bilhane uh, here is my profile i have uh, around 12 years of experience out of that uh, i have worked for industry uh, spinning and denim industry around 1.5 years later on i have joined pichi and i have continuing from around 2011 in this uh, time span i have published more than uh, 58 papers attended uh, conferences various technical conferences uh, in addition to that i have filed three patents out of these one patent is granted and the granted patent is uh, my btech project which i have done while doing my graduation uh, it is about modification of a fabric stiffness tester uh, i hope uh, you are quite aware about me and for today's presentation these are some contents which i have listed out uh, the topic is non ones for filtration so initially i will talk about the non woven then the filtration process and the correlation of various uh, non one structural parameters on the filtration process and finally the application of non ones for filtration so let us start what is meant by non woven non woven are the textile fabrics which are formed by the interlocking of fibers in general non wovens are uh, classified or named as uh, following types like uh, needle punch hydro entangled spun laid mail blown wet laid or we may found some non wovens which are manufactured by using the combination of these above technologies a uh, few of them are uh, named based on the type of web bonding if we see first two they are named uh, according to the type of uh, bonding mechanism which we are using and these following three are named according to the type of web formation now what are the raw materials which we use for the making of uh, non one or we can say non on filters we can use natural fibers we can use man made and, and another thing uh, we can use specialty fibers like uh, bi component fibers which are also have proven advantage in the field of uh, filtration uh, in case of natural fiber we can use almost all type of natural fibers and the advantages when we use, go for the natural fibers are biodegradability they are absorbent so along with filtration we can use them as a wipes and the cost of these filters are less as compared to other man made fibers so we can use almost all type of man made fibers again and the advantages are improved productivity for filtration or we can say improved filtration efficiency these fibers are uniform and we can engineer the fibers as per our requirement requirement fineness length cream all these parameters we can design in man made fibers as per our requirements and third one is the bi component fibers this is again a one type of uh, advanced advanced version of man made fibers where we can combine different materials man made fiber polymers to form a bi component fibers then bi component fibers can be manufactured in different uh, manner so these manners are shown in the figure we can have core sheet side by side and uh, all of them so yeah. then uh, we will see some important steps which are used for non woven fabric manufacturing uh the fiber preparation process like opening cleaning mixing blending these are the fiber preparations like what we do for, for the normal spinning process staple yarn manufacturing similar opening and fiber preparation is carried out in non woven fabric manufacturing also then the next step is the web formation we will go for the formation of web later on the next step is the uh, laying of web whenever uh, we form a web the thickness of web is fine particularly for carded web so at that time we need to go for the laying mechanism or laying process where the thickness of web are improved next thing uh, next important process in non woven fabric manufacturing is the web bonding where we add or impart strength into the web as the web is uh, 
interlocking of fibers these webs will uh, will have a little bit lower strength as as compared to the strength required in the final application so we need to add a strength that the, so the strength is added by the process of web bonding and finally we have a finishing whatever uh, non non fabrics which we have prepared if they are not meeting to the requirement and uh, some uh, properties to be added in the fabrics will go for the finishing uh the first stage of fiber preparation is not covered in the presentation as almost all of you are aware about the staple yarn manufacturing where we go uh opening cleaning mixing or activity the second step that is the web formation we can have a overlook of the web formation technique uh the first web formation technique is a dry laid in that dry laid we use to manufacture web by two methods carded and air laid So here you can see the process of carded web and air laid web formation. Uh, on the left hand side image, we can see the fibers are first opened and they are converted into a lap. This lap is fed to a carding, where the carding rollers will go for thorough opening, individualization, and ultimately they will give us a fibrous web. And in another type of web formation that is air laid here we use a suction air to form a, a fibrous web the condenser cages are used to collect the fibers on its surface whenever the required thickness is achieved on the surface of condenser cage this uh, web which is formed on the surface of the condenser cage are pulled out and will get a, a uniform web on the surface of conveyor belt i hope uh, these things are known to all students the next process is uh, specially used for the uh, non non fabric we call it as a wet laid same technique is used for the uh, making of papers here short fibers are uh, mixed with the water thoroughly and the suspension is then transferred on the perforated conveyor belt after transferring on the surface of perforated conveyor belt it will take a shape of a sheet this sheet is further calendered to remove excess water and then dry it to form a non one web or non one fabric next type of a uh, uh, web formation is a spun laid here in the, the raw material is different than the, that used for in the initial two processes that is dry laid and wet laid the raw material which we use in spun laid is the fiber forming polymers these fiber forming polymers are extruded in the form of filament and they are collected on the surface of conveyor belt in the form of web these webs are called as spun laid web the webs may uh, may be calendar hot calendar to increase the bonding tendency or they can be directly used as a non woven fabrics the last method of web formation is the uh, melt blown where the additional attachment of a uh, hot air compressed hot air is uh, attached to the spun laid spinneret at the bottom side of spun laid spinneret these hot air blast are going to convert the single filament into a very very fine microfibers and these microfibers are collected on the surface of collector this technology will give us a non woven fiber web with very very fine fibers and it is very effective technique utilized all over the world for the manufacturing of face masks after the web formation the second step of non woven fabric manufacturing is laying this process is particularly required when we manufacture a web of lower thickness and we are interested to have a non woven fabrics of higher thickness particularly for carded web this technique is used so we have two options of laying parallel laying and cross laying uh, the uh, we can say uh, the mechanism of the parallel laying is shown here as we have in carded web the cylinder carding cylinder 
this carding cylinder carding cylinder will give us a carded web now the thickness of this web is not sufficient so we need to improve the thickness the way of improving thickness is to arrange the number of cards back to back and have this web on one above the other so ultimately we will reach to our required thickness and this uh, thick web is sent for the uh, needle punching or any type of uh, web bonding mechanism uh, another uh, way is the cross laying where uh, the webs are laid on the surface of conveyor belt and here we do not need to go for multiple cards single card is sufficient enough to produce the carded web uh, to produce the uh, non own web of different width so we ha we have a uh, advantage of cross laying mechanism that we can change the width of a non own fabric here the width of a non own fabric is depend upon the width of a card but here the width of a non own fabric can be altered by altering the path of this cross laying mechanism another difference in these two types is the orientation of fiber in parallel laying the orient fibers are oriented more along the length whereas in cross laying the fibers are oriented more in the cross direction both of them have their own advantages and disadvantages then the next type of the uh, or we can say next important step in the non own fabric manufacturing is the web bonding basically there are three types of web bonding we can say thermal bonding mechanical and chemical so in thermal bonding we used to have a calendaring rollers heated calendaring rollers they will fuse the uh, fibers on the surface of web and will get a bonded web we can have a pattern on the calendaring rollers that pattern will appear on the surface of web thermal bonding is uh, suitable for the synthetic fibers it is not suitable for the natural fibers another type of bonding is a uh, mechanical bonding in mechanical bonding we have two options first one is a needle punching and second one is the hydro entangling so here in this figure we can see the process of needle punching where the needles are penetrated uh, through the non one web and uh, while penetration of needles the fibers which are placed on the top layer they will move uh, along with the needles pass through the web and reach to the base of a web likewise the stitches will form on the surface of the web and these stitches will improve the strength of of a web so this is the mechanism of a needle punching and on the left hand side this image will show the mechanism of hydro entangling where uh, in, instead of this uh, mechanical needles we are using a water jet these water jets will do the same kind of thing uh, here the fibers are <coughs> pulled from the top to bottom whereas uh, in water jet or hydro entangling process the water jet will interlock the fibers on the surface of web and we will get a uh, proper bonding inside the uh, web due to the interlocking of fibers uh, in uh, hydro entangling process we need to go for squeezing and drying operation whereas in needle punching do not required any squeezing or drying operation uh, if we compare both of them the uh, mechanical or we can say needle punching process will give us a uh, non ones which are of uh, higher thickness whereas the hydro entangling process is suitable for the non ones of lower thickness then the another type of bonding is a chemical bonding in chemical bonding again we have some variants like saturation print spray foam etc in this type of bonding mechanism we use some binders uh, to impart strength into the web now we will come to the uh, filtration process before uh, moving towards the filtration uh, is there any question uh, in the process of non own fabric manufacturing i would like to take uh, if you have any question in case of non own fabric manufacturing for me there is not any questions but uh, dear participants if you have any questions or 
comment. You can raise your hand, then I turn on your microphone, or you can write in the chat box. Perfect. Okay. There, so, I think there, everything was clear. Yeah. Okay. Uh, would you... Uh, which are the most uh, useful polymer, yeah. for example? Uh, since which one? Yeah. Lead or made loan? We can use synthetic Ma fibers like uh, polypropylene, polyurethane, phosphine lead. Yep, we can use polyethylene, polypropylene, mm -hmm. these fibers for uh, manufacturing of uh, male bloom. Here, these uh, fiber forming polymers are heated and extruded through a spinnerets. Uh, the size of spinnerets is a little bit larger than what we use in spun lead. Uh, after extruding through these uh, spinnerets, these filaments are subjected to a blast of air. The blast of air will convert these uh, polymers into a very, very fine uh, fiber-like structure. These fiber-like structures are then collected on the surface of, uh, you can say, collector conveyor belt. Uh, either we can use a conveyor belt or we can use a collector drum also. And finally, we get uh, male blown fabric. These male blown fabric are again uh, uh, go for the hot calendaring if we want to improve certain strength or if we need a, a smooth surface. So we can go for a hot calendaring. Uh, later on, both of them are called as uh, spun bonded non-ohms as we are using uh, hot calendaring process. We call it as a spun bonded also. So this is okay. the difference between male blown and spun lead. Mm -hmm. Yes, I understood. Thank you. Yeah, if we compare the structure, the spun lead fabrics will have coarsened fiber, whereas male blown will have uh, finer fibers. Due to the fine okay. fibers, uh, we get better uh, filtration efficiency. Let us start mm -hmm. uh, the filtration process. Great, uh, thank you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we'll start the filtration process from the beginning. Uh, what is meant by filtration? Filtration is the process uh, where we are uh, separating out solid particles from the fluids. Uh, this Solid particles uh, are sometimes contaminations or sometimes uh, we can say precious material which we want to separate out from the fluids. Uh, fluids uh, basically um, the gases or the liquids or the combination of them like uh, vapors. Sometimes uh, we have uh, vapors and through that uh, vapors we need to remove some solid particles. So filtration is the process particularly to separate out the solid particles and in filtration process uh, we must use a medium porous medium for this uh, process so the filtration is carried out with the help of a filtration medium and this media is in general porous material where these pores will allow the passage of fluids uh, at the same time, the size, uh, smaller size of pores will restrict the transmission of particles from one side to another side. Uh, here in this figure, we have some terms and definitions or we can say terminologies which are used in the filtration process. Upstream where the fluids are uh, sent towards the filter media and downstream where the fluids are uh, taken out after the filtration process. then. Uh, these are the uh, particles which are collected on the surface of filter. Sometimes it is also called as a filter cake. Uh, this is the dispersing fluid which we are feeding to the filter. And the filtrate, we call it as a filtrate. Then uh, at the edge of a filter, we have a channel or wall. Uh, here, uh, the important thing is that there should not be any gap in between channel and filter. Uh, if uh, 
we have any gap there there will not be any uh, proper filtration so the important property of filter that is gasketing is uh, considered here the gasketing means the tendency by which we will have a compact situation where the fluids are not allowed to uh, pass <coughs> from the edges of a filter here we have some important terminologies again uh, filtration efficiency it is the uh, ratio of the particles which are restricted by the filter material uh, to the uh, actual number of part particles present in the dispersing fluids then the penetration the number of particles which are passing out through the filters which we don't want to pass so the effective filters will have very very low penetration rate then beta it is the ratio of the uh, total number of particles collected on the surface of filter to the total number of particles which are transferred through the filter then we have a pressure drop the pressure drop is nothing but the ratio of uh, ratio we can say it is a difference between the input pressure and output pressure so in the effective filtration process this pressure drop uh, should be minimum and next is the permeability so permeability of the filter fabric whenever we manufacture a filter uh, the properties like filtration efficiency penetration beta ratio pressure drop these things are somewhat difficult to measure so in in spite of that we will go for the measurement of uh, permeability this will give us an indication of a uh, uh, filtration rate the amount of fluids passing through the filter media per unit time per unit area so it is uh, measured with the help of permeability test now uh, we will see the different uh, ways of filtration here we can see two types of uh, filtration first is the surface filter and second was the depth filter uh, in surface filtration the particles which we want to restrict uh, with the help of filter media are collected on the surface of the filter here the cylinders will indicate the filter media let us say down on fabric where the cylinders are indicating the number of fibers and the gap in between them are the pores which are formed by the down on fabric structure these pores will not allow the transmission of the solid particles through it whereas in the bottom side we have Uh, a depth filtration process in the depth filtration process these particles are collected inside the filter fabric this depth filtration uh, is <coughs> is uh, specifically used uh, in case of non woven fabric whereas uh, most of the time the surface filtration process is carried out in knitted and the woven fabrics and there is a one more type of filter filtration process that is called as cake filtration process where uh, the cake or the layer of dust particles collected on the surface of filter media will act as a secondary filter this filter will help us to improve the filtration efficiency now uh, what are the different mechanisms in the uh, earlier presentation uh, we have uh, different mechanisms of filtration which are inertial uh, interception diffusion gravity and electrostatic capture uh, in most of the filtration process uh, we will found the combination of uh, four type of mechanism for filtration process the last type that is electrostatic capture is uh, specially uh, found when we have a uh, electrostatic charge uh, applied on the surface of filter for the electrostatic filtration process now the um, chart will explain the uh, effectiveness of uh, different mechanisms for the uh, filtration if we see uh, the size of particles like uh, 0.1 micron these particles are uh, shown around 20% efficiency nearly 0% efficiency with the help of interception and for again inertial deposition we have 0% efficiency but when we have uh, improvement in uh, when we see for the larger size particles 
the interception principle is effective around effective around to give us a 80% filtration efficiency so if we want to filter out the particles of size 0.1 micron so it is not suitable to be get filtered out with the help of interception or inertial deposition it is uh, mostly filtered out with the help of diffusion mechanism so we need to go for the filtration process with very very slow uh, fluid transmission rate so ultimately uh, it, it become difficult to get filtered out with these two type of mechanism but yes this interception and inertial deposition uh, particular interception is suitable for the particle size of 1 micron and this curve will show the total efficiency total efficiency of filtration now here uh, in this picture we can see various types of filter uh, particularly i want to show in this uh, figure the electrostatic uh, filters the electrostatic filters are uh, finished with the uh, metal ions and these metal ions will uh, will be charged with the help of electrical connectors to give us uh, electrostatic filtration now from here we will see the effect of various uh, fiber properties in the uh, non-own fabric structure on the uh, pressure drop which is important property of filtration so if we see uh, whenever we will go so for the finer fiber, uh, the pressure drop with respect to time is improved and in compared to that, when we go for the filtration uh, with the coarser fiber, the pressure drop is uh, more or less constant. This is because when we go for the finer size fiber, the deposition of the solid particles on the surface of the filter uh, is more and due to the deposition, uh, on the surface of filter fabric they are uh, restricting for the further movement of fluids and thus we will have a more pressure drop whereas in this case the uh, solid particles are uh, less likely to get deposited on the surface of uh, filter material and thus the formation of cake or formation of uh, dust layer on the surface of filter is less and we get a more or less uniform pressure drop and it is an ideal case if we are focused about the filtration rate and pressure drop but if we are focused about the filtration efficiency we need to go for finer fibers now here uh, in this we can see the uh, combination of the non-own fabrics which are used for effective filtration where the base is of uh, base is made from the melt blown non-own fabric whereas on the surface of this melt blown non-own fabrics we have uh, one kind of membrane on the surface uh, membrane which is formed by the electrospun fibers just uh, before this session we have discussed about the membrane filtration so this is a membrane which is formed by the electrospun fiber and this membrane will improve the filtration efficiency of the uh, filter fabric uh, for the fine particles uh, let us say less than 0.3 microns also and they are particularly being used for respiratory and uh, breathing fil filtration antimicrobial and antiviral filtration also now another thing uh, if we see uh, for the membrane filtration is that uh, here the graph shows the depth filtration the depth filtration is achieved with the help of a melt blown fabric simply and the another type graph here we see the uh, filtration or retention tendency with the help of the membrane so combination of that will be this one green line will indicate the combination again so as soon as we use the membrane on the surface of base filter the retention capacity for the uh, same type of particle size is very very high here as compared to the simple uh, non-own fabrics now uh, we have various types of uh, fibers which can be used uh, as a filter media and their performance and their properties whenever we will go for the filtration are useful so we need to select them 
as per their properties so for selection of uh, fibers if we are uh, filtering out material in the different temperature zone so if we are interested to filter uh, filtration process at uh, 500 uh, degree Fahrenheit so we need to go for the glass fibers uh, if the filtration uh, process is limited to a temperature of say 100 and 150 so it can be fulfilled with uh, a degree not Fahrenheit so we'll, it can be uh, fulfilled with the utilization of polypropylene fibers also and uh, similar to the temperature we have another uh, parameters like uh, abrasion if fluids are having uh, solid particles which are abrasive in nature so, so what type of fibers we need to go for uh, that can be understand with the help of this chart now uh, let us move towards the properties of the filter fabric which are the important properties uh, we need to consider before selecting a proper filter for the filtration process uh, in general we will see the grammage that is uh, GSM of a fabric uh, or the thickness of fabric then density or bulk sometimes we are uh, li having limited scope or limited uh, area where, where uh, the effective filtration is required and we do not have a scope for uh, higher thic uh, thickness filter so we need to see uh, how we can reduce the thickness of a fabric another thing is the solidity and porosity uh, the density defines the uh, ratio of uh, weight to volume whereas the solidity defines the ratio of the uh, area occupied by the fiber to the total volume of the filter fabric uh, another important uh, parameter that is the pore structure so i have uh, shown in this picture uh, in non on fabric we may have uh, various types of pores uh, if we go for the woven or knitted uh, fabric we found the pores are uh, very much linear and the fluids are passing through them are uh, in a straight line manner whereas in case of non on fabric these pores are not linear most of the pores are not uh, we can say uh, through also we have blind pores we have closed pores also these blind and closed pores will improve the um, uh, bulk of a non-on fabric whereas throw pores are used uh, for the filtration process now in this uh, we can see the throw pores are not linear they are moving uh, like this so uh, in this path again uh, we have a filtration like a diffusion if you want to to filter the uh, particles with the diffusion mechanism so it is very very helpful if uh, we have developed the filter fabric but the size of pore is not less as the particle size which we want to filter it out so uh, if small size particle is passing through the opening yet it can be filtered out yet it can be cached inside the cavity and thus we can have an improved filtration efficiency for smaller particles also with the help of uh, non woven fabric that is the main advantage of non woven fabric as compared to the woven and knitted now what are the properties uh, in general we test for the filter fabric uh, these are tensile strength tearing strength and bursting strength uh, uh, there is one more, more important property uh, which is tested for the filter fabric and that is the pore size distribution or we can say uh, average pore size uh, pore size is very very important as it is uh, deciding the uh, usefulness of our filter fabric uh, let us have a look over the tensile strength in this figure we can see uh, the uh, response of a non woven fabric particularly for the tensile strength initially uh, when we go for improving the uh, load on the fabric there will be a little bit elongation later on the elongation is reduced and finally uh, at certain point the fabric will break uh, we have uh, two methods for testing the tensile uh, for measuring the tensile strength of a normal fabric that is strip test and graft test it is uh, similar to that we use for the uh, woven fabrics then tear type again we, we can use a uh, tongue type of tear test and the response is like this 
if we have a non wound fabric uh, like a bonded fabric or print bonded or thermally bonded fabric where the bondings are uh, in, are situated in the intermediate location so at that point at that uh, type of no in this case of non wound fabric we may have several peaks uh, whereas if we have a uniform bind binding like a uh, uh mail blown or the uh, needle punching so we we'll found the single peak uh, in the uh, tearing strength test and the another important property is the busting strength uh, during filtration we apply certain pressure for the filtration process if uh, the pressure is not get sustained by the filter fabric uh, it may uh, tear and the filtration process will stop immediately so we should have a filter fabric of sufficient busting strength then the uh, last uh, but most important property of a filter fabric that is the pore size and uh, the mechanisms uh, in current era uh, is generally uh, image analysis and previously the pore size of a non wound fabric is measured by the sieving uh, with the help of um, sand granules of different uh, size now we see uh, various types of filter fabrics based on its shape we have uh, flat filters these flat filters uh, are uh, made with the help of thick as well as the thin uh, filters or thick filters we can go with the uh, needle punch uh, non wound fabrics for the thin filters we can use woven knitted or uh, spun bond and uh, mail blown non wound fabrics also and as it is uh, having a flat surface and no such modifications or uh, developments in the shape so the cost of these filters are less and they are utilized in uh, various cost effective applications like vacuum cleaner kitchen digester cabin filters of the cars etc Uh, the next type of filter which we found uh, mostly in uh, industrial applications uh, that is pleated filter where the um, <coughs> flat filters are converted uh, into a uh, uh, we can say pleated structure by simple folding the function of uh, pleats here is to improve the surface area available for the filtration process so if we go for improving the uh, surface area the rate of filtration uh, is get improved and also the life of total filter fabric is also get improved uh, these are uh, highly efficient filters the pleating make a higher surface uh, and uh, for pleated filters we need to have a filter fabrics which are flat then they should have certain stiffness once we have given a uh, pleat it should be retained on it uh, and uh, wet laid non wounds are particularly suitable for the pleated filters along with wet laid uh, mail blown can also be used and uh, they are used in uh, pre filters and high efficiency particulate resistant filters they are used in uh, car cabinets also we can found many filters in cars uh, in pleated form they can be used for uh, respirated industrial uh, respirators uh, where uh, there is a chances of fumes or uh, hazardous particles may get uh, may enter into into the body of uh, workers so there we use this kind of respirators another type is a pocket filter where we can use almost all type of uh, non wound fabrics uh, to make pocket filters uh, we simply use uh, stitches or uh, uh, hot sealing and form this kind of uh, structure uh, which is attached to a particular frame again uh, the advantage in case of pocket filter is large surface area available for the filtration and uh, we can uh, go for the filtration rate uh, higher filtration rate in this another type of filter is the cartridge filter where the uh, large surface of a filter fabric is uh, arranged in a small size this kind of cartridge filters are uh, very very famous for the oil filtration used in automotives as in automotive the size of a part should be small so it is used for oil filtration particularly we can see the arrangement of the filter uh, 
filters are arranged on the surface of a perforated shell cylindrical shell where this uh, cylindrical shell will give uh, a solid surface on that solid surface the filter fabrics are uh, arranged in the pleated manner Uh, another type of uh, filter is a bag filter where we can use large size uh, cylindrical size uh, filters and uh, <coughs> they are arranged in large numbers uh, we can use say uh, filtration rooms which we form uh, with the help of filter bag uh, filtration rooms where the sand or dust particles are collected on the surface of filter bags and filtered air is passed through it actually uh, this is the way of filtration air will come dusty air will come from this side and it will go uh, in this direction filtered air will go in this direction whereas this uh, uh, blue lines are indicating the filter bags now uh, as we are util uh, installing large number of filter bags and uh, large number of filter bags and uh, the cleaning is also required so we can have a, a pulse jet for cleaning where the high high pressure compressed air pulses are used to clean and these pulses are supplied to the bags in an, in in such a way that uh, they get cleaned uh, within a short time so that the process of filtration will not be affected and this type of uh, filters are used in uh, various industrial applications like uh, chemical processing industry cement textiles also and uh, it is most form, uh, popular in thermal power plant as there is large amount of uh, dusty air which is to be filtered out before they are sent uh, back to the environment so these are the some pictures of the uh, back filters uh, here we can see how these filter bags are arranged and how uh, dusty air will enter and how clean air will come out then where the dust will go finally dust is collected at the base and it is transferred to the dust room now uh, filters are also used for the vehicles army vehicle season uh, we found there is many many uh, dust uh, in the ground that uh, dust should not uh, disturb the functioning of uh, vehicles as well as the functioning of soldiers so we use nanofiber filters the tank uh, which is shown in the picture will have a nanofiber filters uh, for its uh, effortless running now what are the uh, benefits of non-on filters uh, i have listed some benefits high filtration efficiency high energy saving as it has uh, very very fine fibers very very fine pore structure so you will get a high filtration efficiency uh, high energy saving due to the large number of pores in a fabric structure the filtration rate is very high pressure drop is low so that's why we get a high energy saving low cost the manufacturing cost of non woven fabric as compared to the woven or knitted fabric is less due to the uh, uh, number of stages in the uh, process of fabric manufacturing is less we can say it is a uh, low cost material and there is a high versatility we can have needle punch we can have spun lead we can have mold mill blown wet lead and combination of thereof also so we have versatility in the non woven fabric and uh, third uh, last point that is it is recyclable also these are some advantages now uh, let us have a question from one side, my side to the audience uh, how to change or when to change the filter fabrics when we should look for the change in our filter fabrics this is a question from my, my side the audience uh, let us not stop for the answer uh, let me conclude my question so when we go for changing the uh, filters we will change the filters with respect to time so we will decide uh, a certain time period like periodic maintenance we decide let, let us say uh, after a month we will change or uh, after a year we will change so we have an advantage that uh, without going to damage the routine filtration process filters are changed but yes in this process it is costly 
uh, sometimes unnecessarily we will change the filters uh, so from the cost point of view it is not suitable from the uh, effectiveness of filtration process it is uh, useful second is the pressure drop the another me method of changing filters industrial filters particularly is to find out the pressure drop if we have a significant pressure drop in the filtration process we must go for changing the filters and the last point is the inspection where uh, filters are inspected in certain period of time and if it is found that we need to go for replacement at that time we will go for replacing uh, here I have listed out some uh, leading manufacturers which are uh, developing filter fabrics uh, for different uh, filtration applications uh, these are the references if we have any questions let me take that Thank you, Dr. Bumha, for your presentation. It was so practical, I think, especially at least for me. And dear participants, if you have any questions or problems, or if you're going to share your point of view, please tell us. Eight, thank you. I think everything uh, was clear. Uh, let me ask uh, one question to you, ma'am. Uh, I don't think uh, is it a good platform. How uh, this program is initiated? Uh, how you have decided to go for this kind of uh, program, particularly for filtration? Uh, is there any concept or background behind it? Perfect. Uh, as uh, we are a group with uh, four members, actually five. And our leader is uh, Miss Negin at Nablus, and now uh, I took her responsibility uh, instead of her. And all of us are master students for textile engineering, and especially all of us have worked in filtration industry. Our uh, international department in our university decided to hold this kind of uh, program as in international autumn school and uh, the choosing of the topic uh, was uh, optional for all of us and uh, we four we fix decided to uh, to hold a filtration school because uh, as i said before all of us have worked in filtration industry uh, i have worked in a filtration laboratory for two years and now i work in a research Filtration Institute and uh, the same as other members and uh, we decided to choose this kind of program as it was your questions uh, to share our idea and to I think you know we are going to make a network of people who are expert in this field of industry and as you yeah. know filtration is so practical in the worldwide so and i think it's necessary especially these days yeah uh thank you ma'am uh, we are uh, very much thankful to the organizers uh, and our management also especially our uh, beloved uh, associate team Rakshis sir uh, for giving us uh, the chance to present this uh, session in front of you and i am also thankful to all the audience uh, who are there with us and especially again I would like to thank uh, Korte sir who introduced me with the Negi Abbas mm -hmm. and uh, given this opportunity to uh, share my uh, views on the filtration uh, with all, all of you. In this okay. beginning, I think uh, the video which uh, about our institute is not uh, audible. I would like to share that video uh, with all participants. Uh, it is a one minute video. Uh, please be with me. Okay, sure. Thanks.
थैंक यू मैम अच्छा अभी भी नहीं आया ओके सॉरी ओके ओके लेट लेट मी इंट्रोड्यूस आवर यूनिवर्सिटी मैम वी आर टेक्सटाइल इंस्टीट्यूट सेंटर फॉर टेक्सटाइल फंक्शंस वी ऑफर डिप्लोमा एंड डिग्री इन टेक्सटाइल टेक्नोलॉजी एंड द स्पेशलिटी और वी कैन से <clears throat> strength of our institute is that our institute is a integral part of a textile industry in uh, at our place at our place we have around 19 textile industries uh, which are manufacturing uh, yarn woven fabric cherry woven fabric and we are also processing and garmenting units also so it is very very helpful for our students to understand the practical uh, aspects of the textile industries while learning at our place Uh, so it is all from our side thank you ma'am for inviting us uh, say thank you to negi abbas also for inviting us uh, what is your, your good name ma'am what do i what i didn't hear uh, what is your good, good name uh, my name is zahra yarnian and uh, i will type it here and because negi was our leader i have to enter with her account and my name is zahra yarnia zahra yeah nice meeting you ma'am yeah. have a good day thank you goodbye thank you very much and thanks uh, again for your cooperation and thanks for our invitation i'll we really, i'll will be in touch with both of you again and your uh, institute of textile applications and uh, yes, we would also like to nice be in touch with you perfect yeah of course have a nice day and uh, i think enjoy your weekend Good day, ma'am. Okay. Goodbye. Have a nice time.